Hey guys, it's Steven here. Welcome back to another episode of the Transfer Target, powered by Snickers Pro Team. I need a good jingle for this. Anyway, it's all very exciting, and I'm loving being powered by Snickers Protein and helping fans fall back in love with the game during this transfer window. And I've been going through your questions every single day, and I've got three more questions today to talk about. And don't forget, you can get involved as well and get your questions into me by using Twitter, basically, at Stephen McInerney and the hashtag fanline. Get the hashtag fanline in. Is that how they do it on Spencer FC? I don't know. Get the hashtag fanline in. Uh, you can send a video as well if you want to, by the way. We will play videos on this channel so make sure to send a video on if you want to but if not get your transfer questions in don't forget if you do send a question in you do consent to your name and video appearing name and comment appearing in this video so to speak also finally we will be live over on ball street on deadline day so make sure to check out the link in the description below there will be a video link 1st of February. Can't wait to be involved in that it's gonna be very very fun chatting about deadline day and all the transfers anyway so we've got some transfers to go through today, a bit of Jekyll update and a Brazilian wonder kit. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. But as you know the drill by now, we're going to start um, with the questions from you guys. And the first one comes from uh, Dylan MCFC, who apparently is a tier one journalist. Apparently, of course you are, Dylan. Anyway, Dylan says, do you think we should keep hold of Braff or let him go? Um, in terms of transfers, man, Jaden Braff, we definitely should keep him if we get a chance. I mean, there's been some question marks about Braff's commitment in training, but Jaden Braff is clearly a very talented, very skillful young footballer and if he wants to stay around and be happy, we definitely should keep him. I'm tempted to give him a loan out and not really one for loans of players who could be useful around the first team if they're, a, if they're good young players but I feel like in this instance, a loan for Braff would be really good just to give him a bit of confidence just to make him feel uh, valued and um, get a bit of first team football uh, under his belt show the world what he can do and maybe come back and prove himself next season at Manchester City. I don't see it happening, but I reckon a loan would be very good in the January transfer window for Braff because uh, there's been some rumours that he wants to go and Leverkusen were apparently sniffing around and getting very close at one point. Might still happen, um, but Braff being at Manchester City would be very, very good. Um, Braff being happy at Manchester City would be very good as well for everyone because he's such a talented footballer. But for whatever reason, it feels like something's gone there. I don't know what it is, but yes, if we can keep Braff, definitely keep him. If he wants to go, unfortunately, I don't really think we should keep anyone who doesn't want to be here. But if he wants to stay, keep him. Big love to Dylan for the question, mate. Really, really appreciate it. On to the next question. This comes from Liam MCFC. Okay. Uh, Liam uh, says, who do you think is the most likely to sign for us as a striker in the summer out of Haaland, Martinez and Kane? Well, straight away, Liam, I'm going to rule Harry Kane out of that. Harry Kane won't be coming to Manchester City. Uh, dealing with Daniel Levy and Spurs is not going to be easy. I don't think they'd really... Um, allow a transfer away to another Premier League club for one, unless it was something silly. Well, by silly, I mean we're, we're talking £200 million here or something like that. And given the other options on that tweet there alone, that would cost substantially less than that, um, I can't really see City getting Harry Kane. Very good player, by the way. And of course, I would take Harry Kane uh, if Manchester City wanted him and we could get him. I would take him because he's brilliant. In terms of Martinez, Martinez feels very likely to me. Martinez is a really good player. Uh, but Haaland, I don't think he's unlikely either at the same time. I think Haaland is a very realistic the game, especially given the potential decline of Aguero. I'm not going to write him off just yet, but what I will say is we all know Aguero's getting a bit older and there is some rumours that he could uh, be facing down the end of his contract, unfortunately. Hopefully that doesn't come to happen. But if Haaland um, wants to play for Manchester City, his chances are better and better after Sergio Aguero obviously moves on. So, yeah, I mean, I think Haaland, I think Kane's zero chance. I think Haaland's 50-50 and Martinez, if he wanted him, I think would be pretty likely. I think if he wanted Martinez, we'd get him. We'd have a good 75-80% to 80 chance of getting him. So that's what I reckon. By the way, all three of them, obviously, I'd want, I'd want Haaland first, probably Kane second, then Martinez third, but I would still be pretty happy if you got any of them, Liam. Big love to Liam for the question. And finally, the question today, this one comes from Brian, and chilly Brian by the looks of those emojis, VM underscore 929. Brian said, which players from the Premier League would you transfer into the squad in exchange of a player? That's very interesting, actually. Oh, let me have a paint. I'm just thinking of the players that are exciting in the Premier League. Uh, I really like Grealish. Grealish is a phenomenal player. But then if Grealish was here, he would go. Um, I wouldn't give up Bernardo. I wouldn't give up Foden. I wouldn't give up De Bruyne, Gundogan. Um, I'd probably Sterling personally. I probably would be. It'd probably be Mahrez, unfortunately. Sorry, Mahrez fans. But if you think about the ones that want to go in terms of the age profile and the wide players, it probably would be Grealish for Mahrez if, if somehow you could exchange that. I don't know what would happen ever in a million years, but that's what I would do. In terms of someone else... 
I really like Saka at Arsenal. I think he's a really good footballer. I would happily, happily swap Saka for Mendy. I know he's not a left back anymore, Saka, but uh, Saka is such an intelligent footballer that he can play anywhere. I really like his game. I think he's a really, really interesting player. So I'll take him in a heartbeat. I think he's great. Um, we definitely need... Who else would he be? Oof, players I like in the Premier League. I mean... You'd obviously... I don't really like Andy Robertson, so I won't take him now. I don't really rave. I'll just say those two for now, mate. That'll do. I mean, get Saka and Grealish in. They're very good Premier League players. And obviously, as well, the likes of um, Douglas Louise. I mean, exchanging for... I don't know who you're exchanging for. That's the thing, so maybe not that. I'll just I'll stop with Saka and Grealish. Very good players there. And everyone else in the Premier League, I don't really crave after, if I'm being honest. I don't really crave any of them, so that's probably where I'm at in that in that instance. Um, anyway, they are all the questions for the fan line today. Big love to everyone, to Brian, big love to Liam, big love to uh, Dylan as well. Hopefully I've solved or answered some of your transfer woes today. Don't forget, you can get your questions for it using the hashtag fan line and at Stephen McInerney. And if you want your video, sorry, you want it to be definitely answered, send a video and I definitely will be using any video. So, um, if you want your question answered, send a video in, basically. Uh, guys, thank you very much for your questions. On to the next bit. There's a little bit of a Jekyll update. Of course, there was big rumours about Jekyll. And today, Corriere, Corriere just tell the sport, I can't say it, Italian website, saying that... Um, his agent has got work to complete and he wants to come back to Manchester City. Apparently, he's offered him to Manchester City, but it's difficult, apparently, because City's uh, responses have been pretty negative in a kind of no offence, but we are fine kind of way. Uh, but Dzeko apparently has his hopes up. He's sat at home. He's looking at his Manchester City shirts on the wall and he's dreaming of the Etihad. He's dreaming of our glorious weather. He's dreaming of having a pint in the Northern Court. He probably isn't. I'm pretty certain he doesn't drink, actually, Dzeko. Either way, Dzeko apparently wants to come back to Manchester City. Um... Allegedly, he was offered to both Manchester clubs, but it's Manchester City above all for Eddie Dzeko, which is also adorable. Um, I think that's probably true. I think this idea of City have gone, no offence, mate, we love you, but we don't really need you right now. I think that's probably the most realistic expectation that the player is pushing this um, and hoping that, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, Manchester City will change their mind. But I do believe um, in this instance, uh, I think the way I see it is City will be thinking... Um, Basically, they're either going to gamble on Dzeko or gamble on Aguero's fitness. And I think they'll choose to gamble on Aguero's fitness for very obvious reasons, you know. Uh, Aguero, obviously, is a, a better player. Um, he's a club legend in, in a different way to Dzeko. Um, and obviously, he's here right now. That's the thing. So, they'll be, they'll feel that um, you only need one striker to be useful. And I think they'll go for Aguero, unfortunately. Not great for the Dzeko fans out there, but I think that's what they'll go for. Uh, I say Aguero, unfortunately. I mean, unfortunately for Dzeko. Not for, in general, because obviously, Aguero... Quality. Hopefully Aguero gets back. And finally, we've been linked to another Brazilian wonder click. Uh, wonder clip? Wonder, wonder kid. Uh, I wouldn't blame you at all if you haven't heard of Gabriel Veron. Um, and I really haven't seen much about him until about 25 minutes ago when I was sat on YouTube doing my research about him. I, I quite like the look of him, actually. He looks really, really excited. Another young Gabriel from Palmeiras for roughly around $32 uh, million uh, or euros, is it? Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? That'd be very, very nice. Now, the reports suggest he has a 60 million release clause and Palmeiras are going, you got to get to that to buy him. But apparently, actually, they would take around the similar fee for Gabriel Jesus, which was 32 million euros, I think, for what I can remember. Uh, the, there is a lot of European giants wanting him. Uh, Barca and Madrid, apparently, are after him. And according to Smart Witness, um, United have also started negotiating with Veron, which could be also noise or whatever. But he does look a very exciting player. From what I can tell about um, uh, him, having watched his little bit... Um, what I quite like, actually, is he seems to know when to pass and when to shoot. I kind of like that. I kind of like maturity in a young player, especially in an 18-year-old, uh, what should be raw winger. Um, but he seems to be able to play on either side. I've seen clips of him on the left side cutting in, uh, on the right side, kind of beating his man and getting crosses in. Very comfortable on either wing. I wouldn't be surprised if he could play through the middle either way. Uh, but uh, he seems to be very much a young, darting winger. The player actually reminds me of is Barcelona's Antu Fati. He reminds me a little bit of Fati. Um, really skillful. Slightly small, but not too small, you know what I mean? being like five foot eight, five foot seven kind of thing. Uh, small but and slight, but not overly so. Um, a really devilish burst of pace, which I really like. Honestly, he seems to be able to burst past people pretty confidently. And that turn of pace is so good for creating chances. As I was saying a minute ago as well, He's not, he's not afraid to pass, which I like. Some players don't really like to pass when they're young because they're a little bit raw and they take the wrong options. But he seems uh, good for that. And he also seems to be able to score goals. There's some wonderful finishes on the YouTube compilation reels. It's only YouTube. I'm aware of that. Um, but to be honest... Um, 
once again, even if we got someone with Gabriel Jesus' potential for around 32 million euros, that's still definitely worth it. But whatever you say about Gabriel Jesus, if City were to sell him now, they would get more than 32 million. Someone would definitely pay 50, 60, 70 million uh, for Gabriel Jesus. I guarantee you they would because he's Brazil's number nine. He has an awful lot of marketing potential and he's an uh, established goal from Manchester City Football Club. So um, I'm all for these kind of signings. You know, the 30 million wonder kids. I love it. They're exciting. They're fun. They're better to me than a 60 million signing sometimes. I do think it'll happen. Probably not, but I do think City are interested. Probably are. But anyway, if you know anything about Gabriel Veron, let me know down in the comments. And thank you so much to everyone as well for the questions. And big love to all the patrons currently uh, scrolling down to my left or right. I never remember which side it is. But they're all absolute heroes. Like, you're all absolute heroes as well. I'm getting so close to 49,000 now. I need, like, 50 more subscribers. So please do hit the like button and then hit the subscribe button. Uh, that means I'm only 1K, roughly off 50K, which would be great to get to. For now, though, go watch the videos from yesterday. Manchester to see you top of the league still because it's absolutely wonderful. Big love to you all. Go get a Snickers protein. They're dead nice. Promise you. Lovely stuff.